Greetings and salutations, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome back to League Online. Eric and Mark here with you, and things are heating up as we get into playoffs. All four major regions, the global power rankings now getting more competitive than ever. And this late in the season, if you're still cracking the top 20, you must have been doing something right this whole season, right? I'm calling this one the the supreme Shirley cocktail of power rankings. This is this is the one where you fully load it up with all the grenadine, all the sauce. You're getting it all tasting super sweet and special. That's what this power rankings is because we are getting so close to the time where it really matters. Worlds, the final run up, the final event, the final playoffs for a lot of these regions. This is where it really starts to heat up when you're looking at these global power rankings dive right into them and some of the unsolicited unexpected spice on this list comes from the first three teams i'm talking anyone's legend mad lions koi and ninjas in pajamas all three of these teams i'm surprised to still see on this list al obviously got the big win against fpx and really the name of the game for all three of these teams are three upset wins FPX for anyone's legend, the big G21 for Mad Lions, and the even bigger JDG upset for NIP. In a regular world, I think not, none of these three teams make it on to the power rankings. In the year that we are going through right now across the major regions, you find a, a chance for these teams to make it in to this list right at the very beginning. Anyone's legend, ninjas in pajamas, pretty easy to kind of group them together more or less in the LPL and what we have seen from them. And really it is just a testament to say that you have had success. You've carved it out. You have made your W's throughout this tough internal, you know, long test that is the LPL's run through and especially the change up in the way the scheduling has been this year with Fearless draft into this now, you know, the upper, the big boys and the little boys type of section that we've had in the LPL right now. Both of these squads have done enough that they deserve a type of spot, type of mention in this type of territory, but certainly one where I think in a different year where other teams, other stronger squads are really running away with it. We are starting to see more of a you know three-headed, four-headed type of monster out of a region. You wouldn't find these teams finding the success to be enough on this list. And this is a classic case of now that we've moved into best of fives, there's so much more you have to judge on. There's so much higher implications in these best of series that are now basically season elimination status for at least these three squads because all of them were riding pretty big losing streaks heading into their previous best of fives. But again, because they come away with the upset, they all get back on this list or barely hold on to this list. But I'm not sold on either NIP or MDK. I wouldn't be shocked if they immediately lose in their next round. Not sold on it. Not sold by any means, but certainly one where you have to acknowledge is the success. You have to acknowledge that change up, that switch up as you talk about going to best of fives from a best of one. This type of list takes on a different type of meaning when you're seeing those type of things because you're reminded about that shift in the game. What is more possible when you start to enter these series, you start to talk about pocket picks, you start to talk about that inner meta that develops within a series. Never mind, just actual performance, being able to handle being one game down, two games up, all these type of things factor in to that composition of the team and where their strength is. And we've seen these three find enough success, enough Ws, put themselves in this type of territory, get those upsets, climb up this ladder. And moving on up, uh, BDS, obviously a very disappointing start to their season finals against Fnatic, but still expecting a bounce back for them against SK. They've pretty consistently been the consensus uh, third best team in the LEC throughout the majority of 2024. So looking for a bounce back there. Uh, Fear X continues to sit firmly in that playoff spot. They had an absolutely insane set against D+, and they wrapped their season up against T1. So one opportunity again to prove that they deserve to be in playoffs and that's an incredibly crucial game for both of these squads in the lck that we'll talk about t1 we'll get to a little bit when we're talking about where they find themselves in the power ranking situation but for fear x this is certainly one of those ones that can give you that boost give you the, of course the important positioning important things for playoff type of run 
But to have that type of success against T1, that's going to be the big one. You're looking at players like Closer, of course, who has been a factor when you've had these series against T1. That's going to be one of the big ones that you're looking at on this one. Uh, then, obviously, JDG, we kind of alluded to the upset uh, at the hands of NIP. They're sitting at home, sitting on their hands, waiting for the gauntlet and hoping and praying that they're even going to be a part of it. So it's going to be a long time before we see JDG back on the rift for a little bit of redemption. I sure hope it's Sheer that's playing if they do get that opportunity. And then right around them is Weibo. It's perfect script writing to have Weibo and NIP now match up in the playoffs for the ultimate fraud off. Uh, three weeks ago, I would not be believing either of these teams being on this list still. I wouldn't believe it, but I'd still know that this is this was our destiny. We were always destined to run down into this buzzsaw that is the uncertainty of both of these teams in the LPL playoffs rolling on through and all of course that's the consequence of losing a series this type of early and what is the running and what is the order of the LPL and where you can find yourself you're not one of these ultra elites you're not at the very top you don't get these protections and JDG falls victim and they are certainly in the danger zone now waiting on the result of this Weibo uh, NIP fraud off in the LPL playoffs uh, ahead of that mess of LPL squads, we got a couple of Western teams, both G2 and FlyQuest. Obviously, G2 had a bad series against MDK. Even the games they were winning, they needed like 50 minutes in Game 3. They close out an incredible back and forth that was sloppy from start to finish from them. They're still the defending champs, so they get a little bit of leeway. And then the FlyQuest side of things pretty consistently locked in that third seed and the LCS playoffs and are going to be massive favorites against NRG. They just can't beat Cloud9 or TL. Oh, man. What a what a duo that you're combining in here with G2 and FlyQuest in this type of position. G2, you got to go back to the drawing board. Broken Blade has talked about it since those performances and, and since everything's gone down in the LEC and mentioned that we got to really retool. We got to really rebuild this back up and find where we're making these mistakes and iron them out from our gameplay because it's clearly too costly for what is going on and where the positions are in the rest of the LEC and what can be taken advantage of. And then you go over to the LCS and with FlyQuest, unable to take advantage of a great opportunity in front of them against Cloud9. Still relatively solid series. One of these ones where you can have some type of hope for them to having a bounce back, having a different type of matchup. If it is a playoff series type of situation, but certainly Still, that loss to Cloud9 is a stinger for a squad like FlyQuest that has higher aspirations. And truthfully, should have probably gone to that third game. I think FlyQuest still had a gold lead even after losing that final team fight in game two where they're not exactly all on the same page as a team. So a competitive series against both Team Liquid and Cloud9, which means there's obviously the potential for them to get some type of revenge when the playoffs do start up in North America. Last squad on this list, obviously getting bumped up. Uh, it's been a couple weeks since we did one of these, but KT Rolster riding the momentum of taking down Gen G, handing them their first loss, and maybe even more impressively is following that up by not losing to DRX immediately after. That is by far the most crucial part of this run for KT Rolster is that there hasn't been that dip back down. We are not all of a sudden getting ready for another loop, loop-de-loop -loop of the coaster. We are at least in some clear sailing for now. And how much track is ahead of us? Nobody knows. It's KT Rolster. Not even the conductor of the coaster knows what's going on here for this squad. What I do know is going on. BDD looks good in the mid lane. You're getting the very best from Piosik and that bottom lane combo of Death and Barrel. We're starting to see a lot more of that sunshine that we talked about was possible with this duo. What they were capable of, the raw skill of a player like Deft combined with the champion shot calling of Barrel. You're starting to see some of those effects out there on the rift on the scoreboard for KT Rolster as well. And, you know, Barrel, a lot of that probably getting to cook a little bit in terms of pick ban. We got to see the Nico come out uh, in this last series against DRX. And we know, much like Kyria on T1, whenever he's kind of 
able to pivot a little bit from what's traditionally meta is usually when Barrel is at his very best. So yes, KT wrapped things up against D plus Kia to close things out in the regular season. So even if they lose that, it's not like things are falling off the track. So, so far so good for KT as they just sniff around the top 10 of the global power rankings. In that top 10, starting to get into the elusive club. It's an EU squad. The top-ranked EU squad returning to the top 10. And maybe that 0-3 sweep at the hands of G2 was the slap in the face that Fnatic yet again needed because they looked like a completely different, well-oiled machine against BDS. Uh, I don't know if it was the slap or, or, or the three of them, the trio. It might have been one, two, three hitting. Yeah, the back, that, forth, back. Yeah. <laughs> That had to be it to snap him out finally, and you kind of go, well, why did you have to get slapped the first one or two times? Doesn't matter. The result is here, and that is an awakened fanatic. Uh, one of the important things to check in with, and one of the ones that has been as clear as day throughout this run, throughout this time in the LEC this year, Razork is a heck of a jungler, and the type of skill and potential that he has for this team that's got to be the ticket. We've seen it lots of times talking about, you know, it's all about humanoid. Oh, no, maybe it's about playing attention and getting Jun ahead in the bottom lane or, no, oscaran has got a whole... Mm -mm. It's all, to me, the key about Razor and how his performance goes, what type of form he's in, the mental mindset as well. And if all that is in the right shape, right conditions, right check marks here for Fnatic, they are by far right now the most lethal squad you have in the European region. As long as that... Brain stays activated for all five members, and I feel like anyone other than G2, there's no mental hurdle, and you see them put a performance like they did against BDS. So yes, Fnatic right now, especially with this slumping kind of G2, looking like the best team in Europe, but they're still not even ahead of the second best team in the LCS, and that is Cloud9, who obviously had... The tough final schedule the last two weeks. Get the win against FlyQuest, lose to Team Liquid. But it was a close, hard-fought series. And I think what I learned, at least, is when they actually give Thanatos some urgency in lane, he can still pop off. Uh, it, it, it's, 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 it's a crime it's taken this long to get this type of validation. But of course, given the way, the structure, the strength of the LCS, and the way that the schedule went for Cloud9, we weren't gonna know until this last week. Really, what was the change comparison-wise to the failure that was Spring Split, right? The end appearance of Reaper, what Thanatos was gonna bring to this roster. Yes, we've seen it all the way through this split. We've seen it through these games, seeing it in the ones that matter, the way that the Team Liquid series and the FlyQuest series do in that performances, that's enough for me to believe in what's been going on for Cloud9, to really give it that double check mark. I've given it the proof ceiling that I have seen what I needed to see from this team. You've seen it individually, the change, and I think as far as the jungle goes, Blabber has had a much better spin, much more impactful split than he did last, uh, last time around. And Jojo Pion himself as well, more responsible, quotation marks because certainly it's still, still more he still is dying randomly at times but it's still going to be jojo pion's brand of league of legends that you're going to be getting out there but still a little bit more restrained a little bit more controlled you can tell from reaper in the conversations and the practice environment that goes along and all that combines into two other results here for cloud nine down in the bottom lane berserker looking a lot more like the berserker that is the dominant force of an adc in the LCS, and the other one is Thanatos in the top side. And the change that he has been not only towards Fudge, but what is the regular performances we get in the LCS from these top laners? He has been a difference maker. He has clearly shown, yes, this is another potential berserker type player entering into the LCS and Cloud9. You got him under your banner. Well done. And it's, you know, despite... Thanatos being looking so good in lane, it was actually Impact that was the star of that matchup, which is why Team Liquid has ascended to their highest ever. I feel like the highest we've ever had an NA team in that number seven spot. And sandwiched in between those NA squads is the ultimate enigma that is T1, who almost have had as much of a roller coaster split as KT themselves, maybe even more so because the expectation and fandom is so insane for T1. But right now we're feeling eh, kibsi kibsa about T1. 
uh, P1, it might be, you know, they're regularly just like the spinning saucer cups of the amusement park. But yes, they've taken on the role of being a roller coaster this year with the results, the ups and downs that have been. One of the things that has been incredibly clear throughout this up and down roller coaster for T1 has been an increased priority or an increased willingness to adapt and change and add in the newness, the freshness, the 200 years of Riot game design into their champion pools. And of course, we're talking about mainly the big chief, the big man in the mid lane, Mr. Faker himself. We've seen Aurelian Soul thrown in. One of the things that we asked about, especially when we saw it in comparison to Chovy, almost again, in comparison to Chovy, we have seen the Yone pick in the mid lane certainly be something that's been emphasized by Faker. I think played uh, some, uh, three or three out of four, three out of five type of situation in the in the recent games for T1. To varying degrees of success, and certainly nowhere close to the lethality, the efficiency that you see from a Chovy on this champion. And it almost kind of is one of these weird mix-ups where you go, oh, maybe you just take Yasuo instead because you can get similar type of things from him. Obviously not, of course, the same, but your mastery, your handle, your comfort on it seems to be something that I think could be an X factor different than what we are getting with Yone, a Yone that doesn't seem to have the same type of lethality that these other ones around the world, the one where Faker seems to want to take it on this, you know, flank engage, but you've not built up any of your stacks. Uh, you know, it, these type of things don't work out. Never mind actually landing the ultimate separate. Uh, it's, he's rocking maybe a 50% uh, hit rate on a lot of these Yone ulties. Does not look and, super comfortable on it. And the standard, of course, is incredibly high because we're talking about the GOAT the guy in the mid lane, the one getting it done. But he's not the only one experimenting, taking in this willingness of the 200 years champion. Even in the top side, Mr. Zeus rocking the new Aurora champion. Yeah, that's after a couple mid lane games out of Bulldog. All three games this Kwangdong series, we're seeing Aurora. And uh, it seems like that's going to be a theme come playoff time. I'm expecting that one to be rolling around. And I'm, I'm, I have no expectation if it's still going to stay in the top lane. Is going to be one of the answers that we see and where Aurora finds her home. Definitely expect her to find a home during these playoffs, regardless of what region you're in at this point. Seems pretty pivotal to both of those solo lanes. Uh, early days of her making it into the pick ban phase. Rolling into that top five, uh, the theme is kind of these top LPL teams. You saw LNG at six, just waiting for them to hit the rift. We're obviously waiting for both top esports and BLG to hit the rift. Didn't get any games out of them this week. But uh, D plus Kia holding on to a top five spot. Again, they had this banger back and forth series between Firex uh, where they ended up coming out ahead. And what is with... D plus and subbing out Kellen in like the last two weeks of the regular season. I, I, bro, I don't have any answers on what's going on with D plus Kia in that type of sense. The answers that I know for D plus Kia and the answers that get them W's is the combination of your boy Lucid and Showmaker in the mid lane and a little sprinkling, a little dash of aiming being at his peak. That is one of the things that can make this D plus Kia team one of the more, most interesting options in the LCK. Heck, Showmaker's doing interviews and talking about what it'd be like if he didn't make it to Worlds this time, what it means for him to make it. No, not don't even, even mention the Showmaker. What, what are you not, saying? We don't even want to speak that into existence. We want to see this run. We want to see this team at an international event. Very excited about this D plus key and what they can represent running into these LCK playoffs, the type of growth that we have seen from them this year, solidifying of themselves, and really, again, just this in in incredible rookie year that has been going through for Lucid, but has gone under the radar because of the other fantastic jungle play that we've gotten in the LCK. It's almost unfortunate because any other year, you're screaming up and down, jumping from the rooftops, talking about this prospect, and he's done everything you could ask of him. It's just another bigger fish in the pond in the LCK. He's another case in point why you're seeing all these LCS and LEC teams importing players from the challenger scene in Korea. Because now back-to-back -back years, you're talking pays, then lucid. These rookies, they're not just making taking the LCK by storm. They're looking like they're international level players in their first years. It's it's a you know one-two type of situation where one, obviously... 
incredible raw talent, just immense raw talent straight away with a lot of these players. And number two, well, because of the environment, because of the teams, because of all these type of structure things that they've gone through, plug and play, baby. Put them right into your organization. They know the things. They know the, the command structure, all these type of things. They are going to be perfect teammates type of things to roll through. I understand that. You can get individual cases. You might find a bad apple or two type of thing. But right now, hell yes, it's looking like that's got to be the ticket if you are one of these other squads. Pick yourself up a fresh LCK challenger talent. Other LCK squads on this list. Honda Life quietly going about their business. Three straight 2-0 series wins for them to get their 13th win. And they are eyeing that final matchup of the regular season against none other than Gen G. Who, yes, did drop a game and we didn't suddenly plummet them out of that top spot and out of the top five? Yes. Yes, Gen G has earned themselves more than enough of a, a safety cushion, a built up lead to be in that type of position. But they can bleed. They can bleed. Yes, absolutely. They are not the unmovable statue in the ultra VIP room that they had looked like for all this time. This guy's always here. He's part of the decoration in the set type of situation. Uh -uh. It's like they it, spilled it, on the couch and then the bartender would say, to give you a cleaning fee for that one. Is it, uh, us? Gen G? No. Jeez. Yeah, well, anybody taking that price. But it's one of those ones that leads us to that interesting matchup at the end of the year. You mentioned out Han will life, Gen G. How much type of weight do you put into that one? How much are you willing to show your cards, your hand before these playoffs to say, hey, give us this test and see how we really are against this, you know, other top team? Or is it going to be one of these ones where you hold it close to the hands, hold it close to the heart? seeing what you can get in the playoffs. But again, Hanwha Life showing their growth and really kind of being quiet under the radar in this type of territory at this point, exactly what you want, exactly what you have earned throughout this climb to this type of top, to this VIP type of area. If you're concerned about Genji, you are an incredible doubter and hater because you have seen so much success, so much good from this team. Throw it all the way just at the one, one missed hurdle at this point would be crazy. Either of those squads, though, are going to carry huge momentum, whoever wins that head-to-head. -head. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. Thanks for hanging out, as always, and we will catch you on that flippity-flip.